So, I bet when you came into school today, you didn't expect to see me on a webcam again. But joke's on you. Here I am, at home, in my office. So basically, you know how it is with the COVID. Well, I didn't test positive, but um, somebody in my family did test positive, and I was with them. And so, just for safety's sake, um, I can't come to school. So that's the basic situation. <laughs> so please, I tested negative. I'm good, perfectly healthy. Um, my voice sounds a little crackly because it's really early in the morning right now. Um, and I just woke up, but I did not get COVID. However, I was next to somebody who did get COVID. So uh, here I am instead at home, which sucks. I'm really sorry. Um, I had a blast last week when you guys were back to in person. Um, and I'm really bummed that now I'm at home and you guys are at school again. Um, that being said, we are still going to try and do our best to get some stuff done. This is not an excuse of, wow, a week off, I don't have to do anything. Um, there are things that we're going to have to try and get through and, and do our best on and, and make the whole process, okay? So, that being said, um, I'm going to just kind of talk through what those things are for this very first day. Okay, so this is for either Monday or Tuesday of this week, um, depending on if you're an A day student or a B day student, right? So first things first is you should be done with that part one writing assignment that you guys did. We did the first part together in class and then the second part you're supposed to do on your own at home during those, those work days. That's on Most Dangerous Game. We're analyzing the mood and tone of most dangerous game. So it started off by watching the trailers. We watched Elf and then we watched the recut version of Elf and we talked about it. And then you had to go in and try and work on finding the mood and tone of a specific section of Most Dangerous Game. One of those three quotes. Hopefully that sounds familiar to you. If you have not finished that, the first thing you're going to do is work on that. That should be your top priority um, of finishing first. Okay. Then after you finish that, or if you already are finished with that, um, you can work on to the second part of the writing assignment. Um, and I'm going to show it to you. So this is the assignment that's posted for you guys onto your Google Classroom um, that you can see. Um, and yeah, it's, it's relatively straightforward, but I wanted to just make this video talking through it to make sure you guys kind of knew the gist of things um, and to try and, you know, help you guys out a little bit even though I can't be there in person. So, so in no less than 12 sentences, which means you have to write more than 12 sentences, right? Or exactly 12 sentences if you're really, you know, trying to cut corners here. And that is a requirement. If you don't get to 12 sentences, then you're going to get marked off for it, okay? So every single time there's any sort of sentence requirement, I always get students that are like, "But Mr. Millay, do I have to write 12 sentences? And the answer is yes. That's why it's in the directions, okay? But what you're going to do is you're going to continue the story from where it leaves off. So you're thinking of the ending of Most Dangerous Game. Quick reminder, right? The ending of Most Dangerous Game is Rainsford is hiding in General Zeroff's bedroom. And they, there's this kind of like vague ending of like, who actually wins? But the answer is Rainsford, right? Rainsford kills General Zeroff. But we don't know what happens to him after that. What does Rainsford do? Does he stay on the island? Does he go home? How does he go home? There's a couple people that are still locked in the basement that Zeroff was planning on hunting. Ivan's dead, but there's still a pack of dogs out there, I'm pretty sure, right? There's all these sort of like loose ends about what happens to Rainsford. Um, if Rainsford went through that experience, he probably would have a little bit of trauma to deal with, right? Of being hunted to death. Also, he's a hunter, like he's a professional hunter. This might give him a different mindset about hunting from here on out. You get to be creative with where you think the story is going to go from there, okay? And that's what you're doing. It's, it's, kind, it's a borderline creative right, but it has to be based around the story. So that's where I'm going to talk about now, right? This means you must maintain the mood already established, or if you choose to change the mood, it must be made clear through your word choice, events, and imagery. So if you need assistance, there is a bank of possible moods to choose from, as always, since this is a written assignment, spelling, grammar, and punctuation matter. 
when deciding on your new ending or your new continuation of the story, you don't have to finish it all in 12 sentences. Um, but you could consider some options like what happens to Rainsford? Where does he end up? Is he alive? Is he still on the island? What happens to the general? Okay, like you could say, oh, he's not actually dead. Oh, we, I don't know. And again, we, we want details here. You have to be specific with what happens and you can be creative. Here's a mood bank. These are like, again, not every single mood is reflected here, but this is a good amount of different moods that you potentially could choose from to use. Mysterious, ominous, calm, lighthearted, hopeful, angry, terrified, tense, lonely, cheerful, reflective, gloomy, humorous, melancholy, judgmental, whimsical, romantic, anxious. So those are just some that you could potentially use to continue your story with. So that's what it means is like your story that you write does not have to be all dark and ominous and foreboding like most dangerous game, right? Because that's a story about being murdered basically for fun. So you can change the, the mood if you want to, as long as you make it clear in your writing with the events that are happening, with the way the characters are talking, you know, all those different things. Okay, so you're gonna start off by identifying what the mood is up here at the top, and then below it, that's where you're gonna write your new ending that is 12 sentences long, okay? So again, you can be creative, you can even be a little goofy if you want, as long as that's the mood that you're trying to hit. Right? If your mood is melancholy, which means, I mean, basically depressed, right? You shouldn't have a, a scene in your continuation where somebody slips on a banana peel and, and hits their head and everybody starts laughing at them. Because that's not necessarily a melancholy thing that happens. So the mood should be kind of the, the directing force. It should be pushing you into what you're actually writing about. So you could start with the mood and then come up with your ending, or you could come up with your ending and then go, oh, that kind of fits this mood. Okay, and again, you could think of one outside of this mood bank as long as it still, you know, is an emotion, right? A descriptive emotion. So I know that some people are maybe better at the whole kind of creative writing thing, um, depending on you know you and your personality and what you're good and not good at. But that is what you have to do. Okay. Um, so think outside the box, right? I want it to be creative. I don't want you to just do the exact thing that everybody else ends up doing and just try and come up with something unique and, and truly yours that still fits the mood that you're trying to, to create. I also posted a Google form that's just like a quick little check-in to make sure that you're doing that. And then also I posted a PDF of Most Dangerous Game that has the whole story there just in case you need to double check anything and remind yourself about you know what's happening in the text and then the last thing that i posted is the first week of the independent reading assignment okay so we're not we're not doing it on ingenuity anymore it's just going to be posted on google classroom because like i've told you several times now i don't want to do anything on ingenuity anymore i'm kind of done with it like emotionally done with it. Okay, so what that means is it's just on Google Classroom for independent reading. Week one is due by Friday. You're supposed to have a new book. I would have checked those books today, but I'm not there to check it. So I'll check them in the future, but for right now, there's the new assignment. You need to get a new book, whether that's going to the library, borrowing a book from me, borrowing a book from a friend whatever the case is but you got to get one and start reading it so you can do the assignment by friday okay. and that's it hope you guys have a good day hope it goes well learn lots do your best to get some assignments done um and you can always email me i will be checking my email um periodically if you have questions or need help on something that you know my sub can't help you with because they don't know um you can email me and i will do my best to help you because um, I will be hanging out, <laughs> quarantined. Woo! Goodbye now.